And on Thursday, we had a pretty quiet day. All in all, MBS were up nine basis points. Early stocks were flat. Bonds were mostly weak in the overnight session, but have bounced back in positive territory on the open. We got jobless claims that came in at 261,000 on a 235,000 forecast. It was 233,000 previously. Came in at 1.75 million versus a 1.8 million forecast. It was 1.794 previously. This is the highest level since October of 2021, while claims are still low on a historical basis. It looks like the Fed tightening is getting some traction on the labor market. The Fed fund futures see a 70% chance of a pause in June. Student loan repayments will resume in August, which will crimp consumption. Eurozone economy is officially in a technical recession, and ISM data shows manufacturing is contracting and the service economy is slowing. Increased capital requirements for banks will push long-term rates down, at least at the margins. Notwithstanding the jobs report last week, the evidence is pointing towards a cooling labor market. The volatility in the bond market measured by the move index is following, which should help some MBS spreads as well. There have been several days recently that have resulted in the financial markets upping the odds for the Fed keeping rates higher for longer. The most recent spike in those expectations followed yesterday's Bank of Canada announcement, not because Bank of Canada policy has an impact on the U.S. rates, but due to the proof of concept for the Fed's upcoming meeting. Perhaps it would be worth the Fed hiking instead of pausing, but could be worth slightly different answers in the dot plot. Some traders thought so at least. Now Thursday's data shows the downside of economic headwinds. Jobless claims jumped to the highest level since 2021. The reaction erased the move seen by the Bank of Canada announcement, but the end of year expectations remain elevated versus levels seen as early as May. At the end of the day, we were up 34 basis points. Stocks were up 26, so we had a double win on that. At 100.03, at least we are above that bold red Fibonacci retracement line at 99.845. Hopefully we can make a run and get past that 25 day moving average, which is the red downtrend line. And then there's several ceilings above that. Also some interesting data I saw today I wanted to share with you. Here is some data that shows the entire universe of mortgages outstanding by note rate. The left column is for conventional mortgages. The right column is for FHA loans. So as you can see, 82% of all mortgages are 4.5% or less on the conventional and 83.6% are below 5 on the FHA. So that kind of tells us that rates would have to drop all the way back down to 4% in order to uh, get a, an environment ready to get a bunch of refinances, which means you better just figure out a way how to live and make a lot of money off of purchases. Got to get out there and hustle and steal that business from other people. Also got an interesting Housing Wire article where it talked about median income earners can only afford 25% of the current listings. Long article, but the highlights are that in April of 2023, data from NAR and Zillow showed that of the roughly 1.1 million homes listed for sale, of those 25% had a price lower than 256000 which is a maximum price of a home that households earning the national median income of 75000 could afford. And that's probably factoring in very little or no debt. Um, and car payments have definitely been going up. And then also, typically, of these numbers, 40% of the 1.1 million homes is actually already under contract. So based on the report, the housing market needs an additional 319,000 listings under 256,000 in order for the market to be balanced. And that's just not coming.